Hello, cadet and concert band. Welcome to part two of the yellow scale packet worksheet. So this is the next assignment. Uh, last time you should have numbered all uh, the scales, the first eight notes, one through eight, and marked the flats and sharps in them, if you were able to understand that. If not, maybe you got some help and figure that out a little bit later. But now we're gonna move on to the other uh, worksheets in there. So first of all, just understanding what is a major scale, besides the thing you say before saluting me? Major scale? Uh, a scale is a series of tones upon which music is built. Uh, the uh, so there are lots of different kinds of scales. We're going to be talking about the major scale. There are eight notes in the major scale, and those eight notes make up an octave. An octave being from C to C, from F to F, from G to G. Okay? There is a specific pattern of whole steps and half steps used to build the scale. That's how we give it its unique sound. So there's a specific scale pattern for major scales. And we're going to talk about that right now. A whole step, uh, sorry, a half step is the closest distance between two notes. So there's no, one note to another, uh, uh, a half step, there is no note in between. A whole step skips a note. One of the best ways that you can figure this out is if you understand how to play piano. Uh, and note, noting the difference between the white keys and the black keys. But not everybody knows piano, and I'm not sure that trying to teach you a piano lesson uh, on this video is really the best use of any of our time. So let's use something a little uh, more accessible, the fingering chart in the back of your book. If I'm on a note, say C, a half step above C is the next note. That's how I do go a half step to go from C to C sharp, or go down a half step to a B, which we could also call a C flat, but don't worry about that right now. C, down a half step. So a half step is the closest. D sharp, half step to E. G sharp, half step to A. The next note on the fingering chart is how we move by a half step. To move by a whole step, we'd simply skip a note on our fingering chart. So if I was on this note, G sharp, and I wanted to move a whole step, I would whoop, skip over here. Now I've moved a whole step. If I want to move from here a whole step, I skip over this one to land on this one. So from here to here is a half step. From here to here is a whole step. From here to here is a half step. From here to here is a whole step. Using that information, we can fill out this part of the worksheet. C to D. Is that a whole step or a half step? We skipped over a note to get there, so we know it's a whole step. From D to E. That's also a whole step, because we skipped over a note. From E to F, well, that was the very next note. E to F is actually a half step. We'll use an H for that. F to G. G to A. What's A to B? Whole step. And then B to C, right next door, B to C, half step. So the pattern of whole steps and half steps for a major scale is whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half, whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. That means from the first note to the second note is a whole step. The second note to the third note is a whole step. The third note to the fourth note is a half step. The fourth note to the fifth note is a whole step. The fifth note to the sixth note is a whole step. The sixth note to the seventh note is a whole step. And the seventh note to note eight is a half step. Whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. So uh, down here in section B, we just write that out. We've got the C scale right here. Whole, whole, half, whole, 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 Half. I, it says to use a half sign. I like to use the H, but that's, that's just me. And then, so here it is in bass clef as well. Whole, whole, half, whole, whole, 
whole, half. Anybody can remember that, can come in and go, whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. Good for you. What does it mean, though? I don't know. You got to understand that it means that from note one to note two is a whole step, note two to note three, and so on and so forth. I'm going to go uh, back for a second to this work you've already done. I'm going to go to, uh, well, well, let's look at, uh, at the scale that has two flats in it, whatever that one is for you. First note is B flat, B flat to C. That's a whole step. That checks out. C to D, whole step. That checks out. D to E flat, half step. That checks out. And the, you see the pattern. It's confirmed in this. B flat to C, whole step. C to D, half step. If you want to, I wouldn't think it would be a terrible idea at all. Just to kind of write that pattern in maybe at the bottom, because maybe you did the numbers at the top like I did. Just as another way to remind you how this works. From one to two is a whole step, two to three is a whole step, three to four is a half step. Using that logic, you don't technically have to read a scale. If, you're, if, if we start in here, if I just said, let's look at this fingering chart, and I want you to figure out how to play uh, the... Um, Let's, let's do a D scale, okay? We want to learn how to play a D scale, okay? Well, if the first note is D, and we know the next thing is a whole step, we go from D to E. To go from the second note to the third note, we know we go a whole step, so we jump to F sharp. Cool. We know to move from note three to note four is a half step, we move to G. We know to move from G, uh, from the fourth note to the fifth note is a whole step, A. Fifth note to the sixth note is a, ha is a whole step, B. Sixth note to the seventh note is a whole step, C sharp. And from the seventh note to the eighth, the last note, running out of room, D. Okay, so you actually wouldn't need to read any music to be able to figure out a scale if you know the pattern of whole steps and half steps. And again, so that's one way to figure out a scale. Reading the actual music is a way to figure out a scale. And reading this is another way to figure out a scale. You have lots of ways. And one of these ways clicks for you. Not everybody looks at this and figures it out. I hope you do, because that's reading music and reading, reading notes and reading key signatures. But if you struggle, if I say, here's your test, I want you to play an F scale, and you can not memorize. I don't care if you read this line, or this line, or figure it out from this. I don't care. I want you to understand how to play the scale and to play it accurately, whatever method you use. That's why I'm presenting all these. All right, so speaking of F scale, right here, we just write in the whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half pattern again. I'm not even going to do that right now. So let's do what we, were, uh, what we were just talking about before. We're going to use the patterns that we've given below and write major scales in the key of G, D, and B flat. So we're going to put in accidentals. Don't worry about a key signature. Put in accidentals where are needed to make the correct patterns of whole steps and half steps. Uh, do both bass and treble clef. You don't need to do both bass and treble clef. Do the one for your instrument. So trombone, baritone, tuba, do lines two, four, and six. Everybody else do lines one, three, and five. Okay? Let me do the first one. Let's do the first one together. I'm going to go ahead and do treble clef, but all the note names are going to be the same. G to A, whole step. A to the next one would be a whole step. In fact, let's write these in. Whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. And let's figure it out. G to A. That's a, that's a whole step. Great. A, what's the next note? It would be a whole step. Again, you can use your fingering chart to try to find it. A whole step would not be the next note. It would skip over to that. So a whole step would go from A to B. Then we're going to move a half step. B to C is a half step. Mm. I think I'm writing this kind of in a sloppy way. B to C. And now C moving up a whole step to D. D moving up a whole step to E. E moving up a whole step 
E, moving up a whole step, is not to F. E to F is only a half step because of the weird way pianos are set up. E to F sharp is the whole step. And then a half step, the last note, which we know is the name of the scale, G. So G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G. Complete the assignment. This is the D scale. I did that one earlier, so you can even rewind the video, and I talked through how to do this one. Make sure that you mark the F sharp and the C sharp. And then here's a B flat scale. We did that one too uh, when I went back in the video. So make sure you figure out what notes should be marked flat or not, and just fill in the whole, whole half, whole, whole, whole half. Go ahead and do this bottom half of the page. And when you uh, go ahead, when you're pause, and when you're finished, unpause, and we'll go on to the, the next part of the assignment. Great. Hopefully, you finished that major scale worksheet, line 42. Otherwise, pause, and we're going to go on, flip back to this section. Tetra scales. Tetra scales is just a different way of looking at um, how the scales are put together. Again, from scale to group, do this part with me. From one to two, scale degree one to scale degree two, whole step, two to three, whole step, three to four, half step. Then right here is a whole step from four to five. From five to six, whole, from six to seven, whole, and from seven to eight, half. A tetra scale is Four notes. So the first four notes is kind of a mini tetra scale. So we go from C to D to E to F. The second half of this is G, A, B, C. How did I figure that out? Well, I know whole steps and half steps, but I also could have simply copied C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C right off of this line. No problem doing that at all. This tetra scale, whole, whole, half. This tetra scale, whole, whole, half, and they are connected in the middle by a whole step. Now here's the cool thing about kind of seeing how these link together. The first, huh, in this C scale, the last four notes are the first four notes of the next thing. G, A, B, C. Fits that pattern of whole, whole, half. Now we finish it up with D, E, F sharp, G. Again, how did I get that? Well, I know how to do it. I could have used this, but I also, G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G. I've already got half my work done for the next one. D, E, F sharp, G. Whole step from G, from four to five, G to A. Whole step, B. Whole step, is it a C? No, it's a C sharp. And check it out. A, B, C sharp, D. I got my next one already half done. A, B, C sharp, D. A, B, C sharp, D. E, F sharp, G sharp, A. E, F sharp, G sharp. Oh, and I'm already done with the next one. E, or half done. E, F sharp, G sharp, A. We get a little tricky down here because moving straight down here in, on this side in sharp land, we have B, C sharp, D sharp, E. Do the rest of this for you. F sharp, G sharp. A sharp, B. Then an F sharp scale is F sharp, G sharp, A sharp, B sharp. Nope. Why did I do that? F sharp, G sharp, A sharp, B, C sharp, D sharp, E sharp, what? F sharp. E sharp, yeah, weird. And then finally, this one, the C sharp scale, actually literally has everything sharp. C sharp, D sharp, E sharp, 
F sharp, G sharp, A sharp, B sharp, and C sharp. These scales right here, the C flat, G flat, and D flat scales are, I don't want to confuse you too much, but a C flat and a B are the same note. A G flat and an F sharp are the same note. A D flat and a C sharp are the same note. So these are two different ways to write out the same scale. Since this, a C flat and a B are the same, a C sharp is also the same as a D flat. A D sharp is also the same as an E flat. An E is the same as an F flat. An F sharp is the same as a G flat. A G sharp is the same as an A flat. An A sharp is the same as a B flat. And a B is the same as a, yes, C flat. Very strange. Very strange. But it is all here. We just did the C flat scale, where everything is flat. And up here was the C sharp scale, where everything was sharp. If this is confusing to you, congratulations, you are normal. This stuff is kind of confusing. Right now, I'll settle for you just being able to transcribe what they are supposed to be. And I think some of this will sink in and start to make sense for you. But it's okay if it doesn't yet. Okay? So knowing what we now know and how to use what's here, G flat, D flat, A flat, E flat, B flat, and F, I would encourage you to try to put them together using this, but gosh, you've got an answer key right here. There's no reason, no reason anybody should have any mistakes on that page because the answers are all right here. You just have to flip back and forth, but this tells you exactly what the notes are. Starts on an E flat. Starts on an E flat, tells you exactly what the note names are and how to write them in. Do not worry about this part, the part underneath. Not worrying about that right now. Simply write out the rest of this. Once you're done with that, or um, yeah, pause, and once you're done with that, unpause, and we'll go on to the last part of the assignment. All right, should be done now. We're in the home stretch. This last part, oops, easy. The key signature tells us which notes are flat or sharp. It also tells us which notes are natural. Uh, Dr. Doss is fond of saying every key signature gives us seven pieces of information because there are seven notes. It tells us uh, which notes are flat or sharp and which ones are natural. So even if you have a key signature that has nothing in it, it's giving you seven pieces of information. It's telling you that A, B, C, D, E, F, and G are all played natural. If you have a key signature that has one sharp in it, the F sharp, it's also telling you that all the other notes, A, B, C, D, E, and G, are being played natural. So you have a lot of information in, uh, in each, uh, I'm sorry, in each uh, key signature gives you lots of, uh, of information. The sharps must go in the key signature in a very specific order. F, C, G, D, A, E, B. If you put one sharp in a key signature, every single time it will be F. It will never be one of these other ones. You don't have to look at the music. If I say, I'm going to hand you a piece of music, it has one sharp in the key signature. You're like, oh, it's F sharp. You know. If I say it has two sharps in the key signature, you know it is F, C. If I say it has three sharps in the key signature, it's F, C, G. Always. Always. It will never be any other order. If it has six sharps in the key signature, it's F, C, G, D, A, E. Now, uh, remember this, uh, the order of sharps with, uh, you know, an acrostic, uh, kind of a, a saying. Uh, fat cows go down alleys eating bologna. Father Charles goes down and eats breakfast, whatever, F, C, G, D, A, E, B. The order in which flats go in is this reversed. B, E, A, D, G, C, F. I have remembered this always by the first four letters are bead. And then I think about the term for math, greatest common factor. Bead, greatest common factor. B-E-A-D-G-C-F. I'm going to hand you a piece of music. Uh, this is, this is going to have three flats in the key signature. You don't even have to look at it. Before you even look, if I say it has three flats, you know it's B-E-A. Um, so if you can remember one of these, just remember that the other one is that backwards. On this exercise down here, you do all of them. I know some of you play only treble clef and some of you only play bass clef, but guess what? That doesn't matter. 
you don't even have to be good at like, um, okay, that's on the B line, so that's a B flat. Um, that's on the E space, so that's an E flat. Uh, that's on the A space, that's an A flat. You don't have to be good at that. You just can count. There are three flats. B, E, A, done. You don't read treble clef very well? Who cares? Two sharps? F, F, C. You don't have to be able to tell exactly where they are on the lines to know what it's supposed to be. Sorry, my handwriting's so bad. Four flats, no problem. Bead. Four sharps, no problem. F, C, G, D. Doesn't matter what clef you read. So do write them down in order. Go through the rest of this worksheet. B, E, A, flat, F, C, sharp, B, E, A, D, flat, F, C, G, D, sharp, and so on, all throughout the rest of this worksheet, writing out the letters in order, in order, and then whether or not it's flat or sharp, just follow the directions there. And with that, you are done. And the next time I see you in class, I will check the entire yellow packet for a pretty substantial grade. Um, if you had questions about this and didn't ask, it's not too late, but your timing's not great. I will help you if I can, but also remember that you have classmates that you can reach out to. Uh, you can try to Zoom with them or send them, send them an email or um, perhaps I will even try, I'm just thinking out loud here, I might try to set up a discussion board uh, on Canvas that you could use. I'm not sure how those work, but maybe I'll try it. But uh, I want you to understand this. The goal from doing this worksheet and spending all this time is that you have a better understanding about how major scales are put together and how they are supposed to um, how they are supposed to sound. Uh, that part comes from actually playing them and uh, and having some experience with that. Um, major scale again, it's made up of whole steps and half steps. Has a very distinctive sound. We will actually do some of that in class. We call that ear training. Um, I don't want to take any more of your time right now. Uh, we'll, do, we'll do ear training stuff in class. But right now, understand the theory and the written part of how scales are put together. And we'll worry about the how it sounds part coming up a little bit later. But get to work on this and keep playing your instrument. Love you guys. Band kids are the best kids. See you later.